we need to absolutely become more resolute in standing up to this errant behavior. Otherwise, it is normalized as such. And it isn't the way the West and our global order is wanting to operate, as I say, because the way the digital plane is actually becoming just as important as the physical terrain in order for us to protect ourselves and protect our economy as well. We're becoming increasingly vulnerable to cyber mm. attacks. The Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is to announce fresh sanctions on China this afternoon in retaliation to cyber attacks, which revealed the details of 40 million British voters. This as members of the Interparliamentary Alliance on China are being briefed on Chinese efforts to hack their devices. Well, let's speak to Tobias Elwood, the Tory MP, former chair of the Defence Select Committee and former Defence Minister, who has himself received intimidating correspondence from China. Good afternoon, Tobias. Good afternoon to you. Uh, China targeted our electoral system back in 2021. More recently, a group of British politicians are also thought to have been targeted in cyber attacks as well. Um, let's just state the case for how, for how worried we should be. How big is the threat? How big is the challenge, if you prefer to use that word, as Rishi Sunak did earlier? Yes, this is huge. We need to recognise that China domestically sees this as normal behaviour. It monitors its own population. It harnesses, harnesses that digital surveillance to better understand what individuals are up to. It uses large computer algorithms to identify any questionable behavior. So perhaps it's not surprised that given what it does uh, domestically, it's now extending that internationally to better understand what other countries, what individuals are saying as well. Some of us have been critical, quite rightly, about where China wants to take the world. It has a different interpretation of our world order. It wants to exploit, perhaps, our timidity to stand up to China, given how huge China economically uh, is nowadays. But nevertheless, there are big question marks about how uh, China is exploiting our own freedoms of expression, expression, our own openness, our own transparency to harvest their own data to understand what we're up to. And I'm really pleased that the Deputy Prime Minister is taking a stand. We need to work together with our international uh, colleagues on this, our allies as well. Only then we'll be able to actually provide us a mechanism, if you like, that allows us to work with China in the long term, but allow a direction of travel that says what is acceptable, given the impact that digital domain is now having on every part of our lives. Yeah, and as big a story, Tobias, is how we are currently, or we seem to be currently, pretty powerless to do anything about it. What will China be doing with those details of 40 million British voters? What is what is typical of them to do with that data? So I think that particular question, I think there's less of interest because it's literally the electoral role. More, the, the, the bigger question is what else have they done? What else are they up to? What other uh, things are they trying to find out about us? And that is the bigger question mark as to what they're doing as they trawl through the data. They try and get access. Now, whether that's through cyber attacks to actually cause problems to distract us uh, from perhaps challenging China on some of its own uh, domestic behaviors, how it's treating uh, the weaker population, for example. Britain has been very critical about that. Uh, it's new security laws that it's introduced in Hong Kong against the trends, against the promises that it made when it uh, uh, gains to, uh, control of uh, Hong Kong. And then the wider issues is to do with its relationship with Russia that uh, we see growing ever uh, stronger. So it's how it might utilize the data in the longer term as well. What, as I say, is, is becoming normalized yeah. if we don't stand up and uh, make our mark here. Yeah, and many people um, listening might have a couple of thoughts. First of all, that China interference, China cyber hacking is nothing new. So what's changed in order for Oliver Dowden to get up and want to say something about it? And, and, and actually, what can we do, Tobias? That is, that is probably the more pertinent question. What is in our power to do about this? Yeah, I mean, you are right to, to, to say that this it seems nothing new uh, from that perspective, but it is fairly new and they're getting more and more robust, more and more assertive. And uh, we need to absolutely become more resolute in standing up to this errant behavior. Otherwise, it is normalized as such. And it isn't the way the West and our global order is wanting to operate, as I say, because the way the digital plane is actually becoming just as important as the physical terrain in order for us to protect ourselves and protect our economy as well. We're becoming increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks. Mm. It's far easier 
to actually uh, mount a cyber attack on the city of London, for example, and the, and the huge damage that will cause to our economy rather than actually doing something physical with a dirty bomb or indeed blowing yeah. up, let's say, well, one of our uh, cables, undersea cables, for yeah, example. Yeah, but... but but people will still ask to buy us, Elwood, what can we actually do? Uh, we know that we sanction China on a regular basis. Sometimes those sanctions get lifted, uh, sometimes they get imposed. But actually, what are the material things that we, that we, the UK, can do to try and stop this interference from China? No one wants their voter records accessed, do they? But it, but it feels to many people like the UK is pretty powerless. Uh, well, firstly, we build up our own resilience and uh, the security minister, Tom Tugendhat, is doing that, working with our agencies. So we become, uh, we have a tougher capability to protect ourselves from these attacks. Secondly, as we'll hear today, we're calling individuals out that are called out in this way. Secondly, we're raising this on an international level, because you're right to say, but unless we team up, unless we work with our allies and question this behavior, then it will be normalized as such. So we need to have a robust approach, which actually suggests we start to stand up to China. And perhaps that's the bigger question as to where our world is going. It's certainly getting more dangerous not less. And this is an advance, if you like, of the character of conflict. Mm. It's not direct war, but we're not at peace and we're not at peace because these attacks are continuing again and again and again. Yeah. And so we need to work out a way of punishing and holding yeah. China to account. We do need to posture, certainly. Now, the Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, uh, has had a close relationship with China in the past. He's addressing the 1922 Committee of Tory backbench MPs a little bit later. Kevin Jones, who's a member of the Intelligence and Security Committee in Westminster, has told Times Radio, um, or has asked Times Radio, why the Foreign Secretary uh, is only briefing Tory MPs. If this is a threat to national security, shouldn't all, rece all MPs receive that security briefing? Uh, knowing David Cameron, I think he'll want to reach out to as many parliamentarians as possible. We have a weekly 1922 committee meeting of conservative backbenchers, and it's just, I think, opportune that uh, that's falling in line and we will be briefed. I'm sure that if uh, Kevin Jones or indeed the Labour Party as a whole or indeed any opposition parties uh, seek a briefing from the Foreign Secretary on this matter, uh, I'm sure that they'll get it. Yeah. This isn't about a partisan issue. We need to raise the game here. Rather than play petty politics, recognise the bigger picture of where China is wishing to team up with Russia, team up with Iran as well, and take our world into a very darker place. So, and we need to be more forthright, more res resolute in what we stand for, what we believe in, what we're willing to defend. So you'd like to call on David Cameron to make sure that all MPs are equally addressed on this? Well, I just think if there's something that the Labour Party wants to be briefed on, and clearly they do, then that well, will it, be the case. It isn't a case and, of want, uh, is it? Got it's a case of more, need. Everyone needs to be briefed on this. They do indeed. And more importantly, Kevin Jones or indeed anybody will be able to uh, question the Deputy uh, Prime Minister, who's responsible for our cyber security as a whole. And I'm pleased that he's coming to the chamber to do exactly that. We have been a bit timid, not just us, but I think a, a reticence to be able to stand up because of China's economic clout that it's developed you know, over the years. And uh, at, the, at the end of the day, that does need to be challenged. Yeah. And we are weaning ourselves off after COVID and after uh, some of the other uh, concerns that China has uh, illustrated, where it cannot be trusted. We've taken them out of our nuclear uh, infrastructure capability. Remember, they were removed, Huawei was removed from having involvement with our telecoms as well, because they simply cannot be yeah. trusted. Tobias and we Elwood. are so we're gathering momentum here, and that's very important indeed. Tobias Elwood, thanks so much for joining us.